Welcome back everyone. This is John from Turtle Mode FPV. We're going to move on to part four of our Heavy Metal Plus build series. In this episode, we're going to tackle soldering up our 4-in-1 ESC. What I did first was put my pod on here and I took a black Sharpie and I marked where the wires are going to be coming out of this pod. There's, uh, there's holes molded in to accommodate the wires and keep this thing sealed up from water and rain and whatever other elements a little bit. So I marked those out with my Sharpie. I'm going to take my pod off. Now the ESC on these mounts traditionally facing forward and you can think of the arms as being rotated 90 degrees if that makes sense. And that's going to correspond to motor one, motor one, motor two, motor two, uh, motor three is going to come out this side and motor four is going to come out the top. So I also labeled with my Sharpie M1, M2, M3, and M4 on my frame. That's just going to help me keep it straight in my head and not make mistakes. Another tip that I like to do, and I've done quite a few of these, when we're running these wires, we got to accommodate for where the pod is going to be a little bit um, this is an old open racer pod that I had and I just cut some of the feet off of it and I'm going to put these on my standoffs. That way I'm aware that my wires have to be able to at least, uh, go far enough to get around this plastic. It's not a necessity, but just be aware you do need to give a little extra slack to get around that pod and this is going to help me kind of understand where that needs to be. It does make soldering it up a little bit more of a pain. Next thing I'm gonna go through and do is tin up all my pads. I got my iron set to 350 degrees Celsius here. That seems pretty good for most things. I'm gonna use some of this 951 Kester No Clean Liquid Flux and I'm gonna flux all of my pads up here. So I'm gonna go through and just tin everything. Flux does two things. It uh, keeps oxygen in the air from reacting with the metal while it's in its liquid form. Metal reacts with the air pretty easily while it's in its molten state. But the big benefit of flux for soldering is it spreads the heat around more quickly. So you don't have to try to heat everything up. It, it allows the heat to travel through the pad. So if you're new to soldering, what you're going to want to do is not use the smallest tip possible. I kind of want a wide flat tip that's going to cover the whole pad and I'm going to move that around so the heat touches the entire pad. Um, and you can see that works pretty fast. You want to get a good glob of solder on there, but uh, some people go a little crazy with it, um, especially until you get the wire on there. A little bit's good enough. I'm probably feeding in like a centimeter of solder for each one of these pads. And just like that, we got uh, half of our ESC tinned up. Um, not super difficult soldering at this point. So I'm gonna go on to my other side here. I was having so much fun soldering up my ESC pads that I got a little bit ahead of myself. I forgot on this plus frame, the carbon fiber is longer on the sides because there's not as much metal as there is in the front and back. So these front and back motors get pretty tight to the motor wire. Since I'm not using the cob LED on the front and rear motor wires, it's going to be easier for me to solder to these front pads that would normally be for the LEDs. But I put these big globs of solder on these first three pads um, and that's kind of in the way now. So we're gonna demonstrate solder wick to you guys. I wasn't really planning on adding this to the video but, uh, but stuff like this happens and uh, it's not that hard to clean up mistakes. Solder wick is a braided copper wire basically. It's flat 
and it has flux impregnated into it. And solder will follow heat, so the iron heats up the flux, that becomes the, the copper and the flux become the hottest uh, point and the solder just wicks into it. So I'm just gonna put my solder wick on top of the solder and I'm gonna press down with the heat till it melts and I'm gonna drag it through a little bit and you can see it, it, it pulled all that solder up. You can see that'll take that completely off of there. Solder wick's a good way to do this. If you don't have any solder wick, this is kind of a trick that I've used before. You get your part ready, you heat your solder up, and then you tap it on the table. The wet solder will just tend to fall off. It's maybe not quite as effective as solder wick, but it does for the most part get the solder off of there. Okay, so all of my ESC pads are tinned up and all of my race wire pads are tinned up. I went back and corrected the little bit of a error where I wanted the solder in a different place with the, my solder wick. Now we're ready to connect our ESC to the race wire. I'm going to save the motors for last. That's mainly just because it's easier to get at everything. So this plus frame is going to be a little different. Um, we got to contend with the pod. You got to imagine the wall of the pod is pretty close to this ESC. So I'm going to start with this motor three just because it's facing me. But we got to get the wire to come off of this ESC and then down and then out past this black marker onto our race wire. So I'm going to prepare for this a little bit ahead of time by preforming this wire. I'm going to take my forceps. And I'm gonna grab, I don't know, about five millimeters. You don't want an excessive amount. And I'm gonna kink this over into a 180. And then I'm gonna squeeze that. And that's just gonna form a nice, you see the nice 90 degree kink I put in that wire. Now I'm gonna come back and grab it right behind that kink. Turn it back the other way to form a loop and I'm going to kink that loop again so what we're going to end up with is this little kind of z-shaped wire s-shaped wire and then that's just going to sit right up to our ESC I'll see if I can get a good camera angle here Probably hard to keep everything in focus, but you can see where this will sit on the metal plate and then it snakes up and it's ready to be soldered onto those ESC pads without having to fight with it. You know, it's all it's all in the position that it needs to be. I'm gonna strip the end of this and get my soldering iron heating up here, which I apparently unplugged. I'm gonna stick with 350 degrees Celsius. On these wires too, that seems like a good temperature that's been working pretty well for me. Cut this wire back, not taking off too much insulation, just, just enough to cover the pad basically is what you're going for. Kind of preform that wire a little bit again. Heat tends to rise, so if you heat from the bottom it's kind of tends to heat a little bit quicker. There's a good glob of solder on that. Now I'm going to go start with the pad furthest from me, anticipating that I'm going to be working towards myself with the iron. So going further away from me, it'll be out of my way for the next pad. And I think I'm going to use my forceps to help me get this in the right spot. I'm just going to put this directly over the top of that other glob of solder. Just heat it all together. and try to hold it still while it freezes. So the main thing is that this uh, ends up bending down at a 90 right off the ESC. So you may have to reheat this and coax it down a little bit. That's not too bad.
I'm just going to measure out how much I need uh, without adding a lot of excess. So I'll clip that one off. Come back and tin my wire. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to this pad. Soldering is all about preparation, so if it's going to be difficult to get at from one direction, I'm going to change my frame around here a little bit so I'm not tightening things and able to hold everything nicely. So that looks pretty good how that's wrapped around there. I'm just going to come in and heat the top of this, join the two together, and there we go, wire number one. I'm going to go through and do the next five of these style in hyperlapse and then we'll come back and route the next couple of them because those will be configured a little bit differently. So we got our motors two and three wired up to the sides of our quad. We're gonna move on to our motors one and four to the front and back of the drone now. The process is gonna be basically the same, so I'm not gonna go into as much detail, but uh, we'll show you where the wires get routed. Uh, this wire I'm gonna preform into more of a C shape. So I'm going to uh, get my initial 90 degree bend in there, kinda kink the wire. And then I'm going to grab it at that elbow and bend it over again. And kind of kink it again. So I get this 180 degree circle of the wire. And from that point, I'm going to grab it kind of across the front of this wire like this. And I'm going to bend it perpendicular to itself. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a kink that way too. So this is sort of the shape that it's going to look like. That's just going to feed right through there and come out underneath the ESC. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start out with uh, the pad furthest back and work our way forward. What you want to do is leave a little bit more length in this first one between here and here and that way as the subsequent ones go on they'll be able to wrap around alongside this one hopefully that makes sense I'm in, in fact I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer because of that feature so we got our 180 degree C shape on there and then we have a 90 degree bend and you can see how I increase this distance here so that's gonna go well underneath the ESC on this first one and then the subsequent ones will go less and less underneath the ESC and follow alongside each other then this is gonna wrap around the back of this cable grip and it's going to come out and tie into our motor wire right here. So I'm going to go ahead and strip this wire. Clean the tip off. Keeping the tip clean and putting fresh solder on is going to make this work a lot better. See how that tip is nice and shiny now? That's what you want. form this shape back up that we had because it kind of lost what was going on there and I really want that bend to be close to the solder or close to the stripped end is maybe a better way to say that I'm gonna come back in here with my flux flux really helps um, and this liquid flux is the way to go that fits really nice right now. I don't, that should go on super easily. 
but I'm still gonna turn this where I can hold it more easily with my tools. I'm gonna use my forceps in my left hand. Sometimes this is easier to do with your finger, but you gotta be careful because it gets hot pretty quick. There we go, that looks pretty good. Sometimes you just gotta leave it alone. I would like to go back on that one and smooth it out a little bit, but the wire is right where I want it. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just gonna leave it there and I'm gonna use my tweezers to try to push that wire under there a little bit perfect okay so that's just what we want wrapping under the ESC and uh, stay nice and tight so there's room for that pod now we're gonna measure out down to here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this long so it's a little easier to work with so I'm not tied to the rest of the spool and I'm gonna cut the, the last little bit off in a minute here because I kind of want to preform this wire a little bit too to wrap around this blue thing as best as possible just to keep my build clean so I think I'm going to pick a point at like 45 degrees from this uh, screw roughly I'm going to grab it there and I'm going to kink that wire So there we're kind of wrapping around there pretty good and I'm going to try to do the same thing a little bit ahead of this next bend to wrap it back around the other way. Spending some time to get this stuff uh, nice will save you time in the long run. It's pretty good, but I'm gonna try to get a little more bend in there just so it, I, I ideally want it to stay just nice on its own, right where I want it. Easier said than done sometimes. That's looking, that's looking better though. And I think when I get it soldered onto the pad, you know, that's gonna help hold this stuff where I want it to be too. Come in here with my snips. So I got that tinned up. Do a drop of flux on there. I'm gonna situate this where I can hold it good with my left hand. This is my last opportunity to uh, form this wire the way I want it. So I'm gonna kind of redo both bends. I don't know, maybe I'm making it worse at this point. I think we're just gonna stick around there and go from here. Now I am kinda close to the metal here, so I did my best to uh, leave some insulation. Uh, hang over the edge of that metal Sometimes that insulation over time tends to like creep creep back So I don't want it to creep back and short out on my metal at some point. I Think that's pretty good So I'm gonna move on and do the next uh, five wires in the same fashion in hyperlapse and Then our last step will be to tie the motors in Okay, so that's all three of our number one motor wires going to our rear motor here. Just a quick thing to consider. 
they have to go through this slot here, which is uh, relatively small. So you have to keep this side to side pretty narrow and you have to keep it relatively flat. To get this to work out good, I had to run this uh, center wire kind of over the top of these two and tuck these back in. You have to leave room for this part of the pod, so you also need a little bit of space right in this area here. But uh, this is all looking good, and we can snap this pod on here just to make sure everything is going to fit. And it looks like our wires are coming out of the side just fine. Looks like they're coming out of the back fine. Our power cables are good. So we will move on to our last front motor and we'll be done wiring up this ESC. At this point, if we want, we can do a little basic troubleshooting. We got this whole thing wired up. We don't have our motors on here yet though. But we can just test across these to make sure that we don't have any shorts. If I move these and touch them together, you can hear we would we would hear it if there was a short. So I'm just going to quick go across these points. Make sure we're not going to hear any any noises. So that way at least we know none of these points along that ESC are contacting each other in any place. The last step is to add some motors to this thing and plug a battery in. Um, I'm not going to go too much into adding motors because uh, I think most of you are probably familiar with how to do that but I'm going to use a very sparing amount of Loctite when I do these motors. And I'm going to use the larger cap screws the arm guards are designed for these type of screws and that'll actually help hold your arm guard on once that screw is mounted in place. So I'm going to go ahead and start two of these. Uh, the arm guards are kind of nice just for holding two of these screws in place to get your motor mounted. If you haven't done motors before, a couple things to watch for. Uh, they don't always provide you the right length screws so you don't want to screw a screw that's so long that it goes through the arm and then goes through the motor and keeps on drilling right up into the wires and ruins your motor and then the other thing is when you're torquing these down you don't want to do it one by one you want to keep them all loose until they're all started into the threads and then go through and tighten them down a little bit at a time so we're just going to pretend that this one is uh, on there. We're going to look at the wires for a minute. I tighten these down and uh, solder them right in place. And there's nothing too fancy about how I'm going to choose the length of these. I'm just going to uh, set it out here so it's going to cover up the solder pad and trim these three wires to length. Then I'm going to come back with my wire stripper and solder those three wires on and uh, the last step will be to plug a battery in and see if our LEDs light up. So I'm going to go to hyperlapse while we put the rest of these motors on. Okay, so moment of truth here. We got this thing all wired up and it looks great. Uh, put some red prop nut bling on here. I got my smoke stopper wired up. We'll pop the pod on, make sure that's going to fit. Looks good. I was a little bit nervous about the first fire up here. No shorts. Alexa, turn the lights to 40%. Here goes nothing.
Awesome. Good to go. Let's check our bottom LEDs quick. And it looks like those are good to go too. So we're done with this video for today. Uh, next video, we'll be finishing off our stack, looking at VTX um, receiver options, cameras, etc. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.